Hello. Today we have another drawing of a horse and this time it's a wild mustang in the prairie and it's in color. I used a combination of colored pencils and pastels. So let's have a look. I already talked about this combination of colored pencils and pastels in one of my previous drawings. Uh, when I did that drawing of a Native American. I used a similar combination and actually some of the similar colors. And I really like that combination because uh, I like to use the advantages of both colored pencils and pastels. When I started working with colored pencils, uh, I immediately realize that there are some serious limitations because they are very very difficult to blend they have to be layered and this process requires a lot of patience on the other hand pastels are very easy to blend and spread around good for covering large areas and blocking in and you can see here that I started out by covering some of the these reddish patches on my horse with a soft pastel. Now a few words about the brands or the tools that I'm using. The soft pastel that I used for these reddish patches is uh, Kohinoor uh, English Red, I think. And it's a very nice soft pastel. And what I'm going to be using on top of that are several browns, mostly Faber Castell Polychromos. I'm mostly going to be using a burnt sienna Faber-Castell Polychromos colored pencil on top of that English red to give it a little more shape, to give it uh, more texture and to shade so that I uh, can show the anatomy of the horse a little bit better. In addition to that burnt sienna I am also using a Van Dyke brown and occasionally even a little bit of black I have no problem using black for shading, especially for some of these uh, darker uh, parts of the horse, such as the eye or around the mouth and the nostrils and under the neck. Right now I'm working on the mane, and the mane itself also is going to be uh, colorful like the rest of the horse. I also have to shade the white or, or the white portions of the horse so that it wouldn't look flat. And I'm also trying to add a little bit of shadow onto the mane. So back to what I was saying about this combination of soft pastels and colored pencils. Uh, soft pastels don't allow for the precision and the control that you have with colored pencils obviously but they give you very vibrant nice colors and they can cover large areas very quickly so the thing is if you choose only uh, colored pencils you really are going to need a lot of patience and a drawing like this would take probably a lot more time, probably three times as long to to do. And with soft pastels it's very easy because you just use a soft pastel to block in these areas and you can just go over them later with a colored pencil and refine the details, add some texture, do a little bit of shading, etc. Now I have no problem combining these two different types of media but if you really insist on using either one or the other then like I said you will have to adapt and you will have to accept some of their disadvantages. I'm not saying that you can't achieve similar effects by just using one or the other, it's just that it takes a lot more patience and 
it's a lot more difficult in my opinion. I don't think I'm a very patient person at all. So I'm always looking for easier and quicker ways to do something. And if you've been following my channel, you can see that I did the same thing with my black and white drawings. Because I uh, immediately like charcoal because uh, how, because of how fast it is to work with but I just wanted to keep some of the advantages that you have with graphite pencils and colored pencils so I occasionally use a black colored pencil or a graphite pencil in combination with charcoal so I'm basically doing the same thing with my colored drawings and you're gonna be seeing more of that in the future uh, whenever I do colored drawings especially ones that are very detailed and complex like this one or the previous one with uh, with the Native American now with landscapes I can usually use only pastels with that although even when I use pastels I normally use a combination of soft pastels and pastel pencils and here I did the same thing in addition to the colored pencils I also used both the soft pastels and the and the, the pastel pencils. So now I'm working on the front legs and you can see that this area uh, around the chest and under the neck is a little bit darker because it's uh, facing away from the light source. So you can see how I had to make even the white parts of the coat a lot darker there. there grayish and because the chest is muscular and uneven you can see that some parts of it are lighter because it's an uneven surface some parts of it are obviously getting more light or other while others are darker and whenever I feel like it I can always use my pencil eraser to lift up a little bit of that soft pastel and make these portions uh, covered with that English red a little bit lighter. Now I'm shading the white parts around the neck and I added a little bit of indications of shadow under that mane and indications of uh, folds and wrinkles in the neck. So I'm just going to do a few more of these uh, large reddish brown areas with a soft pastel and the blocking in part will be mostly done. And then I, it's all going to be done uh, with a color pencil after that. But anyway, uh, I, a few words about the reference photo. I really liked these photos of a colorful horse that I found. Of course I was planning to do a different background but I picked this horse because I like the colors and now you can see that I'm using that uh, polychromos burnt sienna to work on the patches covered with a soft pastel and I'm using it to achieve several things obviously I am working on the edges making them a little more uneven I'm also adding a little bit of texture by imitating the appearance of a short fur and I'm also shading it making some portions of it darker so that I can give my subject more volume and make it look more realistic and show its anatomy and muscles and things like that. This area here under the belly needs to be a lot darker even though you see that the, the, low, that the lowest portion of the belly just above the hind leg is a little bit lighter because of the reflected light just refining the appearance of these patches with my 
colored pencil. And a pencil eraser, lifting up some of that soft pastel where needed. And you can see that much of the horse is already done. I'm just adding a few more dots here and there to make uh, to make the coat a little more interesting and a little more irregular. But the, the, the body, the work on the body is mostly done. I'm, I just have to finish the legs and the tail. So I'm just going to block in this final part. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned uh, what this uh, blending tool that I'm using is. It's made of a material that mouse pads are made of. I think I talked about it before. So I make these myself, uh, just like I make those tutilians that I blend charcoal with. Um, now I'm trying to add a little more detail to the mane and the tail. I made them a little bit darker, I used a little bit darker brown. But then, but I also added some tones, some lighter tones as well. And I erased some parts of it with a pencil eraser to, to pull some highlights. And now I'm going to do the background. I'm covering this with a white soft pastel and blending it with my finger and the reason why I'm doing that is because I'm gonna go over it with blue now and the reason why I put down the white first is to make the blue lighter and to be to also make the blending a lot smoother so I want a smooth blue background here and the white that I put down first helped me achieve that so right now I'm going to uh, use a little bit of darker yellow here in the background because I want to create an appearance of dried grass, yellowish grass in the prairie. And I'm going to cover that with a soft pastel and blend it with my finger as well because whenever I blend larger areas or cover large areas it's easier to do it with my finger so now I'm covering this dark yellow with a lighter one and I'm gonna explain why I did that in a second but first I'm using I'm going to use a little bit of brown to make some suggestions of hills and some detail in the background. I just don't want to make the background look too flat. But the reason why I first laid down the dark yellow and then the lighter one on top was because <coughs> when I start erasing, uh, this dark yellow will show up underneath, and then when I draw some uh, lighter blades of grass with a lighter yellow with a lighter yellow soft pastel on top uh, the grass is gonna look uh, a lot more complex and realistic but I don't have to do too much I just have to add a few suggestions of grass and blades of grass here in the foreground and then <clears throat> as I go further into the background it get smaller and uh, less defined. I'm also going to draw uh, some mountains here in the background and blend those as well and uh, 
trying to clean up their shape a little bit. Here I'm going to use a brown colored pencil to add some suggestions of a shadow under the horse. And I'm cleaning up the edges on this tail and the mane which was spoilt a little bit because of the because of my work on the background. And now I'm going to use a pencil eraser to draw some clouds. I'm going to draw the upper edge of the cloud, just erase as much as possible until the white shows up and then I can pull the rest of it with my finger and blend it to make it smoother. That should be enough because I just want a few light clouds here and there. And that's about it. Again, I'm using this brown colored pencil to add a little bit of detail in the further in the distance, just to make the terrain look a little less flat. And here the drawing is pretty much done. I'm just putting down some finishing touches. I already sprayed it with a fixative and removed the tape. So now I'm just going to sign it. So that was my colored pencil and pastel drawing of a horse. I'm going to move it around a little bit so that you can see all of it. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit so that you can see more of the detail. And I'm going to zoom back out. I hope you enjoyed this drawing. I'm going to put some links here on the end screen so that you can check out some, uh, some of my other horse drawing videos. Thank you for watching. Bye.